Hey there, we'll have a look at some different ways in which we can provide vectors to your objects in Weavy 8. We'll show you these options by using end-to-end -end examples in a Jupyter Notebook. You'll need a Weavy 8 instance and a Python environment. Even though the examples are in Python, the concepts are universal. First of all, you should note there are a few different options for getting vectors during import. You can have Weavy 8 get the vector for you with a vectorized module, or you can provide your own vector. We'll be covering both examples in this video. First, we'll instantiate the Weavy8 client. In this particular instance, we'll provide the API key for the OpenAI API and the URL for our instance. And here we've got a simple helper function to display our outputs. And we'll test it out by just grabbing the meta information about our instance. And let's quickly check the schema just to show you that it's an empty instance. Perfect. Now we'll load our data. The details here aren't important, just keep in mind that what we're loading is our set of wine reviews with a body, title, country, and so on. So this is our helper function for loading our data. And now we're ready to import objects. Let's start adding some objects with VB8 Obtain Vectors. We'll add a class called wine review to the schema like so, with the OpenAI vectorizer set. And if we check the schema again, you'll see that the wine review class has been added here. And you see them down the bottom that the vectorizer is specified as the OpenAI module. And already we're ready to start adding objects. So what we need to do next is to set up a batch process and load our objects one by one and to add it to the batch. Notice that all we're adding is the data object and the class name. And we're done. And just as a reminder, the data object looks like that with no vectors in it. So did it work? Let's take a look. Let's run an aggregate query with a count. It looks like we've got 50 objects in our database. That looks pretty good. Let's try a vector search. Let's try a near text query to look for some reviews relating to some fruity French wines that I enjoy. So how did we do? Well, it looks pretty good looking at these results. The first review talks about some juiciness. The second one talks about fruits. So it's all looking pretty good. Let's move on to the next part. Now we can try importing objects with our own vectors. We'll go through the same steps. We'll add the objects to the schema. We'll call this the other wine review, add it to the schema as the new class. Just note that there's no vectorizer specified here. And we can add objects. Now we'll use some arbitrary meaningless vectors for the demonstration here. You'll notice that we've got a list comprehension that generates these vectors. They don't mean anything, but you'll get some unique vectors for each object. So we can run that to import data into our database. And we'll try a vector search again. Now we can't use near text as we don't have a vectorizer, but we can use near vector and search against an arbitrary vector of our own. And when we do, we get a series of results and you can see that the top result here is quite close to our source vector. And when we scroll down, the vector at the far end or the last of our search results is the furthest away, which is the result that we expect. Fantastic. What if we use another case where we provide the input vectors and use a vectorizer? How would we do that and why would we do that? Well, let's have a look at the how first. Uh, we'll create a class called the other, other wine review. We'll go through the same process of adding it. We've added the vectorizer back in here. We'll add objects. And in this instance, we're going to create a string out of our data object. We're going to go to OpenAI and get vectors back. And we'll pass that vector onto Weavy8 manually. Let's try another vector search with this setup. We'll use the same data object as the last one in the for loop, and we'll use the same vector that was generated from it. It looks like the searches work just fine, with the top result being the same as our query object, and the rest of them looking pretty sensible as well. But more importantly, this setup is useful because we can still use near text while making use of our own vectors. And we see exactly that here. We've run the same near text search, but with our own vectors. And we're able to do that because the vectors come from the same model, which in this case is OpenAI. So in summary, you've seen that you can provide your vector to Weav8 or have Weav8 handle the vectorization. As to which one you use, it really depends on what you're after. If you provide a vector with the object, that's the one that Weav8 will use. Keep in mind that if a vectorizer is not specified, you cannot use near text. So in some cases, using a vectorizer and uploading your own vector might give you the best of both worlds. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.